views don't always translate into leads, you know, because a TikTok gets 300,000 views doesn't necessarily mean you're getting 300,000 leads, but you are getting more eyes in your business. It's not a bad thing, but you want more engagement. You want comments, you want shares. Welcome to The Real Pulse of Real Estate, where we discuss the true ins and outs of the housing market. Welcome back to another episode of Real Pulse of Real Estate. We are joined by Brian Murray. That's me. Well, why would I go, Murray? <laughs> Where was that I, You from? know, I appreciate the extra emphasis. Yeah, I was just very excited. So how are you doing today, I'm sir? I'm doing really well. How are you doing? I'm, I mean, it's the same day that we've been recording these other episodes. Well, They're right, but same. this is for the sake of the oh, audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they great. think it's a different episode. Wink. Yeah. Oh, wait, what? Well, <laughs> so sorry, audience, for those listening, Adam just winked at me. <laughs> it's been a day, hasn't it? <laughs> not even one i know all right so this episode we want to go ahead and talk about understanding that not everyone's starting out and this isn't just real estate this mm -hmm. is this is kind of across the board yeah. of marketing and everything not everyone starting out has a videographer Correct. has an editor has a a sound person has a whatever right so Tips, tricks, that's what we're gonna go through today. Yeah, I honestly think the first thing just to lay the ground floor mm -hmm. is that you will not be a Christopher Nolan with your first mm -hmm. video. You will not be a famous photographer whose names escape me on your first photo. Mm -hmm. You're going to start small. I mean, let's be real, It this isn't egotistical. You're not going to be us at the beginning. <laughs> do we still have polishing to do? Absolutely. Oh yeah. And yet we are bounds further than where we were when we started. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's so cliche, but truly do not compare yourself to others. Compare yourself to you. Yes. Right. Compare yourself to the past you and go from there. So when it comes to videography, all this other stuff, it comes to marketing. I, I mean, yes, this is a real estate podcast. We're going to talk about real estate. Right. right. Oven houses. You know how many times I've still gotten action from an open house that no one's come to. The reason being Instagram stories. Yeah. You know what? If the audience isn't gonna come to me, I'm gonna go to the audience that's sharing on social media, that's sharing on Facebook. And I don't need a fancy Adobe suite. All I really need is my phone mm -hmm. because there's so many tools that you can access via the TikTok editor, Instagram, Reels, all that other stuff to allow you to give people a walkthrough of the open house that you're doing that they're not at. Yeah, and how many people do you think saw that your video and was like, ooh, wait, that actually was kinda nice. I wanna see that in person. And it's like a good thing I saw this video, now I can make my way to this open house. Yeah, and that's one big thing that we've been seeing with a lot of uh, agents when it comes to YouTube. And that's why we've been talking YouTube and that's why we did our first house tour and we're looking to do more. People don't know what they're missing and can't get excited for something until they see it, right? And that's right. either going in person or just utilizing social media, I feel like a broken record almost because the amount of agents who came to me when I was the director of marketing at Keller Williams Realty Services here in Northern Kentucky, who said, Adam, I see what you do. I see the success you have on videos. I see the branding and everything. I'm not comfortable on camera. Let's be frank, I don't care because video does not necessarily mean you're on camera. Right. Get that out of your head. You can very easily do a walkthrough going through the house and it's just focusing on the house. That's how I started. We would shoot our Adam's answers and everything, but then I would do open houses over the weekend and I would just point and film and every Instagram story is 10 seconds, just fill in a little bit of information. And you know what? If I messed up on this section, I delete that and I redo it. And that's the beauty of stuff like Instagram stories is do it in little spurts. No one is requiring you to do a two minute long take of you walking through the entire house, you know, getting all of your ums and your uhs in there and shaking yeah. the camera. The beauty of Instagram stories with open houses is you can literally highlight exactly what you think needs to be highlighted and it stays up there for 24 hours. Mm -hmm. And so it's almost like a see it before it's gone. FOMO, you know, fear of missing out is a real thing yes it, you know we all feel that way and so having these instagram stories where you can show something off but only for a limited time 
instills that FOMO and will probably draw more people out to your listing. Instagram stories, you can save. And now you have a 50 second to two minute walkthrough that's now saved on your phone as a video and you can post that on your other platforms. Yep, absolutely. That is a great way to do it. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people overcomplicate what they want to do with their video work and you know like what do i say to the camera to act like you're talking to a potential buyer mm -hmm. i mean it's as simple as that you don't need to overcomplicate it you don't have to do anything flourishing you're not tom cruise you don't have to jump out of a plane all you have to do is just act like you're talking to a buyer when we started filming videos back way back when i remember a lot of the times i, was, I said the camera is going to be pointed here and i'm going to be a little bit to the right and if you want to talk directly to me if it makes you more comfortable do it if it'll give you a more natural performance for the video, like I'm happy to do it. Mm -hmm. It really comes across as natural. What people don't seem to realize is that when you look directly at the camera, there's one of two ways an audience will take it. Mm -hmm. If you are speaking directly to them and giving them information and you know doing some kind of open house or telling real estate tips, they will feel like you're talking directly to them. Mm -hmm. It'll connect with them more personally. If it was an actual like scene from a movie, and they looked directly at the camera, it would be deeply unsettling. Yeah, it would be breaking the fourth wall that Deadpool pulls off, but they pull it off as bits, yes. not the entire flow of the movie. Yeah, that's just something to realize. The camera is not your enemy, it is a person. Mm -hmm. You're essentially having a conversation with a person. And once you realize that you're basically just speaking to people, the process of recording yourself on a camera becomes a little bit easier. It is a hill. It's almost like talking to yourself in a mirror. Yeah. You know, it's like giving yourself that morning pep talk when you're about to go out and sell a house. Your five affirmations of the day or yeah, what have you. Yeah, absolutely. Now, not to beat a dead horse, but going back to the open house scenario, you can just have the camera focus on the house and you're behind the camera walking through. It is no different talking and walking through the house using your camera than it would be if an actual client came through the door and you gave them a tour around the house. Same with car salesmen. It's actually be become a lot more popular to start showing the inside of a car and everything else. And here's the features and all that. It's allowing you to gauge new audiences and gauge more interest mm -hmm. because it's what you would be doing anyway if you had a live person, but you get a little bit more control over it. Yeah, no, absolutely. I want to reiterate something that people don't usually think about mm -hmm. is whenever you're starting video, mm -hmm. most people think the most important thing is what you see. Yes. And it, and yes, like what you see is important. It is a video, but honestly, to me, what's more important is how you sound and the sounds that are coming through the phone. How often do you play a video on your phone and then you just listen to it while it's going on? You know, yes. like, like, oh, I'm doing laundry. So I'll just listen to this real quick and I'll look over when I need to look over. Uh, if something gauges your intention that was said and you want to, you might rewind a little bit and look at it. Yes, exactly. Because realistically, a lot of people nowadays truly are using video format as almost somewhat of a podcast. Yeah. And that's why video podcasts are really taking off. Mm -hmm. You know, when we do Adam's Answers or Adam's Storytime, we have a consistent, good looking setup that like will catch your eye a little bit. But what's more important is the information being given. So I always make sure that the audio is there. You know, we have music that's keeping you engaged. You can always clearly hear what Adam is saying. The audio of what you're doing matters so much more. You could see a short film that looks terrible but has great audio and you'll be way more engaged than a good looking film that has terrible audio. Yeah, and let's hit this really quick when it comes to audio because I think a lot of people who will post videos and everything truly don't understand. Like agents who might start outside or car salesmen or whoever, wind will kill you. Yes, absolutely. Nine times out of 10. The of wind audio wise will immediately disengage your audience on top of that with audio do you remember back in the day when facebook you'd post a video and people are scrolling through the timeline and facebook just automatically started playing that video with sound oh no You're, do you remember yep, yep. it just automatically started playing with sound it would startle people and it would be in one of those situations of they're at like a family function and just don't care to be at that family function and then all of a sudden this noise is happening to combat that, Facebook now plays your videos no sound to start. Mm -hmm. Because of that, just auto captions are huge. Yes, we are saying there are people who will listen to the video podcast format where they're doing something, maybe they're folding laundry and they put the phone down and they're listening. Mm -hmm. You've already engaged with that person. The people who you aren't engaging with are the people who 
have it quiet you don't have any captions and it just is playing and all they're seeing is your mouth moving mm -hmm. nothing happening so if you don't have captions on your videos you've lost a significant amount of your audience correct and we've even started baking captions into some of our videos for instagram reels and TikTok. tiktok specifically yes yeah and we we've always kind of played around with that i they changed tiktok's formatting a little bit since we started mm -hmm. so now the subtitles again are being blocked mm -hmm. by things it's always an ebb and flow because as these services change you know sometimes old content will work as well you know that this market is always changing and evolving and the ways to reach people are never going to be the same mm -hmm. you know if you told us 15 years ago that we were watching six second videos on TikTok all day people would be like that's crazy why are you only watching six second videos mm -hmm. but here we are yeah. and it's important to be able to adapt to yes. whatever's coming next yeah the other important thing especially with making content is you want to make sure that it feels evergreen and make sure that the content isn't necessarily time-based. Mm -hmm. And so what I mean by that is, sure, open house videos work perfectly if you're advertising a house, but you can't show that video a week after the open house is over. It mm -hmm. doesn't make sense to keep that content. Especially if that house is under contract and everything else, you need new content. Right. And so what we do is a lot of our content is evergreen. So it could be watched at any given point mm -hmm. and it would still be pertinent to the person watching. We could share it again within a year and it will still work as content, you know, reposting. There are a couple of videos we've done about the market currently, and those aren't evergreen. Mm -hmm. Those will likely not be reshared. Mm -hmm. But those are trending correct and important to keep your audience educated yes if there is needs to be a balance between trending topics and content that can be evergreen and viewed at at any point and it just works yes and striking that balance is difficult to see you know a real estate job is always in an ebb and flow mm -hmm. nothing ever stays the same the amount of times i have had people reach out and i've said this before and i'll, I'll say it forever and ever the amount of videos and the length of videos that I have over the years mm -hmm. is almost like a credit score, mm -hmm. right? The Adam's answers, although there are some things that have changed, there are some differences in regulations and laws that change, right? Because everything right. is always changing. The amount of times I've had a client say, oh yeah, I was watching this Adam's answers and they're able to go through my archives and get some answers to their questions mm -hmm. makes them a lot more comfortable talking to me because it, they feel as though they've already connected with me. Right. And and there have been plenty of times where I'm talking with a buyer or a seller and they're saying, oh, yeah, I watched this Adam's answers. That I posted three years ago, yeah. right, that people are still referencing and is still giving accurate information. Now, there might be something that I need to update on that, but that allows me to have that conversation with them and it makes it a lot simpler. Absolutely. What is a great tool that some people don't utilize is, you know, playlists, YouTube playlists, TikTok playlists, getting all that content in one space. You could have a playlist on YouTube that is literally just called loans and lending. Mm -hmm. And then literally all of your Adam's answers that deal with loans and lending questions they have about it all right there. Mm -hmm. And so you could just point and be like, hey, just watch these like five minute long videos give you a little bit of an idea of what you're dealing with. Mm. So maybe when we have these conversations down the road, you know exactly what we're talking about. Yes, and, and look, at the end of the day, I am a huge advocate for professionalism. There are times where even in our videos, it's very important to allow personality to show. Mm -hmm. And that's why every now and then we'll release a bloopers because we need that authenticity yes. of, I'm not just spouting off real estate information. I have a personality, here's who I am. If you like it, great. And if you don't, that's totally fine. Here's XYZ agent that'll work for you. However, it's giant when it comes to professionalism of understanding once you've gotten to a certain point to really step it up. I've seen agents who represent their clients when it comes to listings who are taking photos from their digital camera or heck, even their iPhone. There is a big difference between a realtor who is a professional realtor and is really good at selling houses versus a professional photographer who's very good at showing the proper aspects of a house. Now, there are agents I know who are professional photographers and do their own listing photos, and I respect that all day, every day. If you are not a professional photographer, use a professional photographer. At the end of the day, I think it's important to understand you, the professional realtor, should be used by your clients because you bring that next level and you bring that education. You just said it right there. 
using realtors for their professional knowledge. But if you as a realtor are not wanting to use professional videographers, photographers, and ignoring that professional knowledge, your content's not going to be up to the bar it needs to be at. No one's going to watch it. No one's going to want to pay attention to it. If you hire someone with professional quality, you will get professional quality. Your clients are hiring you to represent them to the best of your ability. Yes. So I'm going to use third parties to represent them to the best of my abilities. However, yes, I fully understand not everyone starting out in real estate is getting paid immediately. Like, let's be real. We've talked about this. If you're getting licensed as a realtor and you get under contract day one of being licensed as a realtor, typical loan process, you're not getting paid till 30 to 45 days out. So getting started, getting comfortable with video, that is important. Yeah. There, there are plenty of editing aspects that are free on, I mean, multiple different platforms and apps wise, right? It's understanding that you can't beat yourself up if you hate how your voice sounds, even if you are doing just the walkthrough videos, just don't beat yourself up about it. And don't feel like you have to hire this like $3,000 videographer to create like a one minute video for you. You know, there are people who are eager to hop into this industry, but understand that just because they're eager to hop in doesn't mean you shouldn't pay them for their content. Mm -hmm. You know, work out a process or a system with the videographer or photographer if you're choosing. Figure out something that works best for the both of you because we are trying to make money. Mm -hmm. I've done a lot of videos for free yeah. and I shouldn't have, but I wanted to make sure that I could do it. I undercharge a lot because I like helping people. I shouldn't do that. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I work with people who now respect me enough to pay me what I'm owed. Mm -hmm. And that is the best feeling. Do not take advantage of young videographers who are fresh out of college. It is so easy. Think about when you were a young realtor, the amount of people who tried to take advantage of you trying to make things work more easily for them. Treat the professionals with the respect they deserve and they will give you the high quality content right back to you. Yeah, really the golden rule. Right. Yeah. Treat others how you want to be treated. Use a professional and work out how you're going to have that relationship, what your expectations are and what their expectations are, because you might work with someone just like your clients you don't get along with. Yeah. And aren't going to be for everybody. And that's OK. But definitely respecting, understanding, because I think one thing that's a little bit difficult for when I talk with agents on I have a videographer, it's very it's it's very startling to them, especially mm -hmm. starting out because they don't have that income coming in consistently and yet understanding they can just go video to video yeah. and pay by that. They don't have to have a structured, I mean, this is five years in the making yeah. is where we are. And some of it too is understanding like, I don't get a base salary for being your videographer. It's when you need me, I come, I do the work and I get paid for the work I do. Mm -hmm. You know, you have, I am basically on a retainer monthly to mm -hmm. get things done for you yeah. at this point. Cause we have a good process and a good schedule, but you know, sometimes you're like, Hey, I want to do this video. I'm like, cool. When I'll add this much to the price. And then that fits it for this month. Mm -hmm. Understand that they are people too, you know, mm -hmm. don't short change the people you want to build a good business relationship with. If you invest in business prospects and partnerships, it will return to you tenfold. Yes. And I think that's one thing that we've seen. Thankfully, I'm blessed enough to have consistent closings monthly. Mm -hmm. um, the amount of volume that I've been doing, I very much equate to what we've been doing, but we've been working on it a long time. And I think one other aspect I want people to understand is whether it's professional, whether you're starting out, whatever, consistency is the most important thing. And that's that's coming from a guy who struggles with consistency of it needs to be posted this day. And look, you can schedule it out on platforms. Yes. You, the videos that you have, you can schedule to go out. The most important thing is the consistency of it going out regularly yes to your audience creating some kind of set schedule and expectation that content will be posted on specific days you know it's it can be as easy as creating a content calendar in your gmail mm -hmm. with reminders of hey this wednesday at 3 p.m i'm going to post this video perfect or maybe like hey every friday i'm going to do a q a i started doing on oh, my personal instagram i do uh, music mondays or I, sometimes i push the tuesdays and i call it tunes day and I just, I just, but I know, right? That's Clever. A, all right, that's, that was very good. <laughs> but, um, you know, I just, I post a song I'm listening to, or, you know, I do Q&A Wednesdays where I ask a question 
You know, one time it can be as goofy as like, hey, uh, you and I are hiking on a trail and a bear appears. What do we do? Yeah, you're going to get goofy answers, but you're getting engagement. You're Mm -hmm. getting more people to come back and see why someone would marry this bear or like would push me down so the bear would eat me. (laughs) Like, you know, you're creating something the audience wants to see. Yes. And I, I literally this I know we're trying to keep these bite sized. I could talk about this topic for for hours because mm-hmm. there's so much, you know, views don't always translate into leads, you know, mm-hmm. because a TikTok gets 300,000 views doesn't necessarily mean you're getting 300,000 leads. Yes. But you are getting more eyes on your business. It's not a bad thing, but you want more engagement. You want comments. You want shares. Mm-hmm. You, I, literally, I, I could talk about this for hours. There's so much that goes into marketing and branding and video creation. And it's such a powerful tool that I think is just so underutilized. And so when people approach you and they're like, wow, you're doing such a good job. I'm like, I really do feel like we are doing something really nice. Yes. Let's circle back and encapsulate all yes. of this. One, you don't need to start out professionally if you're starting in the business. I get that yeah. 100%. That's, that's not a requirement, although I am talking to you my professional videographer yeah. and although we are we are having this conversation it doesn't necessarily need to start out for everyone yeah so one start feeling comfortable just by doing walkthroughs showing the product that you have if the audience is not coming to you to an open house go to the audience yes via social media so start out with that especially if you're not comfortable on camera once you have gotten that and are starting to feel more comfortable go ahead and put your face to it because that's your brand that's people associating with you it's important for people to associate my face with real estate the second people think real estate i want them thinking me i absolutely adore it when i have clients or people that i haven't talked to in ages sending me a real estate meme or something via instagram or however because they immediately thought of me Mm -hmm. so start out sure do walk through definitely get yourself on camera at some point and like you said just have a friend sitting across from the camera Talk to them, have a conversation. Glenda Baker, who is a very big real estate agent who is on TikTok, who has a great audience, talks about it all the time where doing her videos, talking to someone. That's what clicked for her is that comfortability of actually talking to someone. Mm-hmm. That's totally fine. From there, make sure you stay consistent, either that's a schedule or something else. However, one other thing I want to touch on, make sure you have ideas for content. Yes. Like, between episode breaks or I'm driving around or I I got home and I thought of something I have in my notes, it's just my notes on my iPhone is writing down, I want to talk about this, or I want to talk about that. Just having a content note section of these are things I'm going to touch on for my next Sunday stories, my next Adam's answers, things like that. Or you know what? I'm getting a lot of questions on this specific topic. I've talked about it before, but it's time to do a refresher. Yes. Things like that. Just start taking notes, have the content locked and loaded. That way you're not struggling of, okay, it's the first Wednesday of the month. I need to record some videos. What do I talk about? And then you spend three hours having no idea what to do. Just go to your phone. Yeah. Just go to your notes section, what you've already written down, and start checking out what you want to do. Yeah, absolutely. And then also make sure you're giving yourself the time to record it, edit it, check it. Sometimes mm-hmm. you may need to redo it. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're like, oh, I need to post a video on Wednesday and you record it on Tuesday, probably not going to get that video out on Wednesday. Mm-hmm. You know, be realistic with your timelines. Yes. Like I said, there's so many tips and tricks. And honestly, this might be a neat little video to do where we could sit down and we could talk about and I could do like, here are your five tips. So maybe that's a video we could do in the future. Yeah. We just wrote that one down. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. And that's that's one big thing of it's not going to be 24 seven content creation. It's thinking ahead and having things locked down to do at a later time. Yes. The thing I've learned over my time and over the business I have built, Mm -hmm. thankfully it's been successful, is me being able to just show up, do the content that I need and walk away and have you edit it and everything saves me time to have more one-on-one time with clients, more one-on-one time with potential leads. Mm -hmm. And the money I'm paying you is coming back tenfold, even in the time I'm saving to be able to work with more clients and focus on that instead of being distracted by editing. Yep. Is it is it a necessity at the beginning for an agent? Yeah, absolutely. I get it because money, right? Right. Everything costs. However, when you can get to that point of understanding, I'm going to utilize this service so I can make this working with a client, that's where it really needs to start clicking. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you said it best right there. It's the ROI, your return on investment is Mm -hmm. massive. And it's because 
you have more. It's like Bo Burnham says, all eyes on me. <laughs> you yeah. know, yeah. you're getting more eyes on your content. More people are seeing you. More people want to work with you. And that's the whole goal. And very fortunate to have, you know, had this partnership for a long time. And hopefully, you know, it keeps going for a long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we've, we've got future plans. And it's also understanding that we have to build foundation blocks to get to those future plans. Right. We can't just jump into certain things. There are things, 100%, just go for it, post it. Because at the end of the day, a posted video is going to get more views than no post at all. Correct. However, getting to a point of comfortability and getting a rhythm down and getting a schedule out mm -hmm. of, okay, it's first Monday of the month, I need to do this. So second Wednesday of the month, I can have this out. Correct. Understanding and planning ahead. Yeah. And again, it might be you start to realize, okay, this content that I'm shooting and with the amount I'm paying isn't actually helping me the way I thought it would. Don't be afraid to pivot and have that conversation and be able to say, okay, this is actually the direction I want to go. now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's all about communication. Because if you look at the first year of Adam's answers, the first couple of years, actually, it's three minute videos and I'm answering three questions per video. Yeah. And then we realized, you know what? We can shoot more content if it's a question per video and it's shorter form, which is keeping my audience more engaged and they're watching it all the way through because they're seeing, oh, it's only 45 seconds instead of, oh, it's been three and a half minutes. Yeah. Back then, those three minute videos with three questions, they worked. Mm -hmm. But then the Facebook algorithms changed and now it goes to different things. So now shorter videos are king. Mm -hmm. And who knows, maybe in a few years, we'll go back to longer form videos. Mm -hmm. But it's being able to change with the market and ultimately, at the end of the day, making content that you are happy with. Yes. If you are not happy with your content, what's the point of making it in the first place? Exactly. So I think these were a lot of great points. If anybody does have any questions, Brian, where would they go ahead and reach out to you? So if you have any big questions for me, the best way to reach out to me would be through my Facebook or my Instagram. You can find me at Brian Murray Media. Um, or you can email me directly at brianmurraymedia at gmail.com. I would love to answer any and all questions, sit down for a coffee. And if you're looking to, I don't want to say up your video game because it makes me sound like, if you're looking to up your video game. But, but truly, I mean, the quality is there versus what yeah. I could produce versus what you can produce. Yeah, so if you're looking to create some monthly content on a rhythm, you know, I'm happy to sit down and talk with you and we can talk about what you want to do, you know, what brand do you want to appeal to? What's your audience? You know, I worked in marketing for years. Mm -hmm. You know, I learned a lot through working with the professionals at Kona. And then I work with some of them still through their freelance agencies like Martini Marketing. Like mm -hmm. I always have more to teach people than I think. And I'm always happy to have these conversations. So Brian Murray Media, that's who I am. Perfect. Search Brian Murray Media anywhere and everywhere. Always feel free to check out any questions. Always feel free to reach out, whether it be real estate related or video content related, things like that. But thank you, Brian, for being on for this episode. I really appreciate it and looking forward to another conversation. Awesome. Cool. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Real Pulse of Real Estate. If you're looking for more content, follow me on Instagram or TikTok at I'm Cron Burgundy or Facebook at Adam Cron Realtor. Can't wait for you to join us next week.